Good afternoon, and welcome to this meeting of the Subcommittee on Landmarks, Public Siting, and Maritime Uses. I'm Council Member Adrian Adams, the Chair of this Subcommittee. We're joined today by Council Members Barron and Traeger. Today we, we will be hearing LU 154, the Landmark Preservation Commission's designation of the Coney Island Regalman Boardwalk in Brooklyn as a scenic landmark. The designation consists of the boardwalk extending from West 37th Street in Coney Island to Brighton 15th Street in Brighton Beach, including the beachfront boardwalk, its structure and walkway, comfort stations, railings, benches and lighting fixtures, steps and ramps to the beach, steeplechase pier and the beach beneath the boardwalk extending from the north land side edge of the boardwalk southerly approximately 100 feet into the beach or ocean side. The Coney Island boardwalk is in council member Traeger's district. Representatives of the Landmarks Preservation Commission will testify on this item followed by testimony by the public. I now open the public hearings on LU 154. And call on Lisa Kersavage from LPC. Council, please swear in the panel. Do you affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in your testimony before the subcommittee in response to all council member questions? I do. You may begin. Okay, great. Good afternoon, Chair Adams and subcommittee members. I am Lisa Krasavich, Director of Special Projects and Strategic Planning at the Landmarks Preservation Commission, and I'm here to present the recent designation of the Coney Island Regalman Boardwalk by the Landmarks Preservation Commission. Coney Island's boardwalk is one of the best known waterfront promenades in the world. The 2.7 mile boardwalk has given people of all economic and social backgrounds free access to the beach and seaside since 1923. It is a significant destination unto itself and the embodiment of Coney Island's democratic spirit. The landmark site incorporates the entire length of the 2.7 mile boardwalk, including steeplechase pier, <coughs> excuse me, boardwalk comfort stations, ramps and stairs to the beach, railings, benches, and light fixtures. It also includes the sand beneath um, the boardwalk, resulting in an approximately 100 foot wide corridor along the length of the boardwalk. On May 15, 2018, the LPC voted to designate Coney Island Regalman Boardwalk as a scenic landmark following a public hearing held on April 17, 2018. At the public hearing and in written testimony, 12 people supported designation, including City Council Member Mark Traeger, um, Council Member Deutsch, New York State Assembly Member um, Stephen Simberwitz, New York Department of Parks and Recreation Commissioner Mitchell Silver, Alliance for Coney Island, Coney Brighton Boardwalk Alliance, Historic Districts Council, Landmarks Conservancy, and the Society for the Architecture of the City. There were no speakers opposed to designation. There are only 10 scenic landmarks in New York City, three of which are in Brooklyn, Prospect Park, Eastern Parkway, and Ocean Parkway. These all were designed by Frederick Law Olmsted, or in some cases with Calvert Vox, and built between 1866 and 1875. Ocean Parkway, the first road of its kind in the United States, was it intended to extend from the southern entrance of Prospect Park to the sea. The proposed designation of the Coney Island Boardwalk, or excuse me, the designation of the Coney Island Boardwalk would culminate this procession of 19th century scenic landmarks extending from Prospect Park to the Atlantic Ocean and add a decidedly 20th century culturally significant um, scenic landmark to this important collection. And LPC would regulate this scene at landmark just as it does the other 10. Coney, Coney Island has been a summertime destination for nearly two centuries. Named by the Dutch settlers for the rabbits and, that reportedly flourished among the dunes, the first hotels opened in the 1820s. By the start of the 20th century, there were numerous hotels, bathhouses, and saloons, as well as popular amusement district that included Dreamland, Luna Park, and Steeplechase Park. Prior to construction of the boardwalk, most of Brooklyn's waterfront was privately owned. Not only did businesses charge admission fees to use the beach, but in many places the sand had begun to wash away, leaving only a, a sliver of shoreline. Coney Island's boardwalk is named for Brooklyn Borough President Edward J. Regalman, who played a major role in its creation and is seen at left driving the first stake. Part of an ambitious plan to rejuvenate Coney Island and the Ocean Beach, the approximately 80-foot wide boardwalk was designed by engineer Philip P. Farley. 
Farley described the boardwalk as an elevated highway. It consisted of a plank deck supported by reinforced concrete piles and girders. Construction of the boardwalk began in 1922 in conjunction with a major expansion of the beach. Similar to other scenic landmarks like Central Park, Coney Island Beach was designed and engineered to create a semblance of a natural landscape for the public to enjoy. In these photos from that year, you can see the jetties before the sand was filled in and people enjoying the sand as the boardwalk was being built. The first section between Ocean Parkway and West 37th Street formally opened on May 15, 1923. Two years later, the boardwalk was extended 4,000 feet east to Coney Island Avenue. The new beach and boardwalk for the first time in New York City allowed people of all economic and social backgrounds full, free public access to the beach. The boardwalk became a thoroughfare connecting the amusements, concessions, and the beach, and as Coney Island's new Main Street was a popular attraction unto itself. Control of the boardwalk was transferred to New York City Parks Department in 1938. Under Commissioner Robert Moses, a 3,800-foot section between Ocean Parkway and Stillwell Avenue was straightened and moved almost 300 feet inland. The reconstruction of the boardwalk began in January 1940 and was completed five months later in May 1940. As part of the project, the beach was also expanded and replenished. The following year, 1941, the boardwalk was extended an additional 1,500 feet east to Brighton 15th Street, establishing its current length of 2.7 miles. These incredible 1940 photographs from the Parks Department archive illustrate what has been described in a 1923 guidebook as the most densely crowded and most democratic of New York City's seaside playgrounds. Evident in these photographs, and as remains the case today, the boardwalk is unrivaled among New York City's waterfront attractions for its size and its popularity, and one of the city's most iconic public spaces. The boardwalk has featured prominently in popular culture throughout the history, from paintings to films, as you can see in these photos. In addition to annual events such as the Mermaid Parade and smaller cultural events that take place on the boardwalk throughout the summer, The boardwalk connects physically and historically to several other individual landmarks in Coney Island, including the Wonder Wheel, the Cyclone, the Parachute Jump, and Child's Restaurant. Since the 1920s, changes have been made to the boardwalk and beach, largely in response to the coastal environment at the edge of the Atlantic Ocean. The scenic landmark designation seeks to recognize that the boardwalk must continue to meet city, state, and federal goals and requirements for resiliency and safety within a coastal flood zone. Changes since the original construction are part of the boardwalk's history as a publicly accessible seaside structure and do not diminish its cultural significance. As you can see in the slide, the level of the beach has been raised substantially from its original elevation, and along the length of the boardwalk, its relationship to the beach has changed since the original construction. The walkways, planking, and paving have been replaced many times in the seaside location, and no historic fabric remains. In addition, light fixtures, seating, and comfort stations have changed over time. The Coney Island Regalman Boardwalk was, des was designated as a scen scenic landmark in recognition of its cultural and social significance. The boardwalk has given all New Yorkers and visitors free access to the beach and seaside for almost a century, and it is one of the best known boardwalks in the world. It remains an iconic place, a significant feature of the beachfront landscape, and the embodiment of Coney Island's egalitarian spirit. Given the significance of the Coney Island Boardwalk, we recommend that the City Council uphold this designation. And I want to quickly conclude by saying that this designation would not have been possible without the administration, including Mayor de Blasio and Commissioner Silver. And I'd particularly like to thank Council Members Traeger and Council Members Deutsch um, and the Coney Island community for their overwhelming support throughout this designation process. Thank you. Thank you very much. We've been joined by Council Members Deutsch and Miller. The chair will now recognize Council Member Traeger to offer his remarks. Thank you so much, uh, Chair Adams. I just say we waited a long time for this day to happen. Um, I want to certainly extend my thanks to LPC. Um, I, I do want to thank uh, the mayor for honoring his commitment uh, to making sure this happens one day. That day is, that has arrived. I want to thank my colleague, uh, Councilman Deutsch, who's been with me on this effort from day one in his office, and I truly appreciate that. I want to thank the thousands of residents uh, who signed petitions, who 
uh, organized uh, to make sure that this treasure receives its rightful status as a, as a city landmark. I want to thank all the supporters from all over the country and the world who were shocked to learn that this was not already uh, a New York City landmark. Um, th this means a lot to our community for, uh, for a number of reasons. Um, during the last administration, uh, there were proposed significant changes to the boardwalk and the public uh, felt very strongly about the material. Uh, and I'll be clear that this designation does not fully resolve the material issue as far as wood versus concrete, but it does do some significant things. Number one, it is now a landmark, um, which means that any future significant changes to the boardwalk will have to go through added public scrutiny and the public will have more say than it did before. So there's added protections to the boardwalk. Number two, which I think is also very important, it's now an accountability tool for the New York City Parks Department because just like we expect the city to maintain Central Park and Prospect Park, it now needs to do a better job of maintaining the Coney Island Boardwalk, which still needs help with maintenance. I'm sure my colleague Heim Deutsch would agree. Um, and it's now noted in our history as a, as, a, as a landmark, as it should be, because this was a structure that was created at a significant turning point in the 20th century. Just to remind my colleagues, this area was not always accessible to the public. Before the boardwalk's construction, before the turn of the 20th century, this, was, this property was privately owned, and this area was segregated, where people of color could not use certain restrooms, Jews could not stay at certain hotels. So when the, the city purchased this land and the city invested to help construct the boardwalk, it was a turning point for the city of New York, for this neighborhood. It is a symbol of integration, a symbol that regardless of where you're from, the color of your skin, how much money you have, the faith you believe in, you are welcome here in Coney Island and Brighton Beach. You're welcome to enjoy this beautiful public treasure. And I'm also proud to report that uh, to my colleagues, this effort was done without the work of a lobbyist. There was no conservancy. We don't have the ability to raise millions of dollars like certain neighborhoods in the city to preserve our history. We did this the old fashioned way, the grassroots way. Knocked on doors, signed petitions, got people involved in the process. So I'm very, and that's very symbolic of what this, what this structure stands for. And so I just want to thank also the city council, all of my colleagues. We received unanimous support from the city council. So I want to thank all my colleagues in this council. I want to thank this committee. I want to thank the speaker. I want to thank the former speaker as well, who was very supportive. And so this is a very proud day for the Coney Island Brighton Beach community. And I respectfully ask my colleagues uh, to support this designation. Thank you so much, Chair, for your time. Thank you very much, uh, Council Member Traeger. Uh, I also uh, grew up anticipating going to Coney Island on many weekends, a little girl from Queens, and uh, was always totally excited by the notion to get to Coney Island. Uh, you couldn't pull me away from certain parts of Coney Island. Um, Nathan's has always been a particular favorite mm -hmm. of ours as uh, the fun house, and we could just go on and on and on. I'm really excited about this designation, and I do congratulate you and Council Member Deutsch uh, on bringing this uh, to us. Um, it, it's, it's overdue in my estimation, and um, we truly do celebrate this designation. Thank you very much. Are there any questions from the panel at this time? Okay, um, I see that we have uh, Ms. Barbara Zay. Would you like to step up and testify? Thank you. Good afternoon, council members. My name is Barbara Zay. I'm representing the Historic Districts Council. The Coney Island Boardwalk is arguably the most famous boardwalk on earth and an obvious landmark. The Historic Districts Council strongly supports its designation as a New York City scenic landmark, since by any measure, an accounting of New York City's landmarks, which does not include the boardwalk, would be entirely incomplete. We applaud its designation and thank Councilmember Mark Traeger, 
for being such a strong champion for this long sought honor. We can all learn a lot from the City Council's leadership on this issue and are heartened by the Council's support for this action, which caused the LPC to reconsider its position on this property. We deeply hope that properties such as the Walt Whitman House on Ryerson Street in Brooklyn, the poet's last, uh, last remaining New York City residence, uh, which a number of council members have supported for landmark status, will also be reconsidered by the LPC. HDC does have concerns about protective power of the scenic landmark designation as it applies to the Regalman Boardwalk. As we understand it, current administrative interpretations of the Landmarks Commission's policing power abrogate almost all authority the agency might exercise over the property. All future changes to the actual boardwalk in style, material, or even form will be reviewed in an advisory capacity without public testimony to help guide the commissioner's advice. The public will have the opportunity to weigh in about existing buildings that fall within the bounds of the scenic landmark, but that was the case previously when the Public Design Commission had sole design review over the property. Issues of the historic context of this public property, the very boards of the boardwalk, still fall under the binding authority of the Public Design Commission and are ultimately controlled by the Parks Department, the very agency which replaced them with concrete in the first place. We urge the City Council to use every tool in its considerable arsenal to ensure the boardwalk is returned to a more appropriate material. Please make the Coney Island boardwalk wood again. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony. Are there any more members of the public who wish to testify at this time? Seeing none, I now close the public hearing on this item. I will now call for a vote in accordance with the recommendations of the local council member to approve LU 154, the designation of the Coney Island Boardwalk as a scenic landmark council. Please call the roll. Councilmember Adams. I vote aye. Barron. Permission to explain my vote? Granted. Uh, thank you. I just want to call attention to the fact that we need to make sure that as the history is presented in the written form that the Landmarks Commission include all of the aspects of the history of any areas or buildings and properties that we are considering. I want to thank Council Member Traeger for highlighting the fact that yes, there was a period of time during which this area was racially and religiously segregated and not allowed people to participate. I think it's important that we include it in the written history, and I want to thank my colleague for making mention of that in his comments, and I vote aye. Miller. Permission to explain my vote, please? Granted. Thank you so much. Uh, and um, my colleague, uh, Barron, certainly articulated well some of my concerns, and as usual, uh, uh, Council Member from Coney Island does his homework, and, and their historical reference is so important. But it also demonstrates the very, very important work of this committee and how we must preserve the integrity of communities, and that is the value of this city in itself. And uh, like our chair and my esteemed colleague, uh, alumni from Erasmus Halls, and, and I think that we spent countless countless hours in, in Coney Island. In fact, my best friend and next door neighbor, his father owned a luncheonette over on Surf. And we, I, I think we only work for money to ride the cyclone. <laughs> and I, I think I hold the record for riding the cyclone. Um, with, with, with that being said, this is such an important part of the fabric of New York City and I'm very proud of the work that is being done that we maintain uh, the fabric and integrity of, of neighborhoods as we see these transitions happen throughout the city. And so I, with that, I proudly vote aye. Traeger. Uh, I want to permission just to briefly explain my vote. I, I want to thank my colleagues uh, for, for their um, unwavering support, for their understanding of, of what this means to our community, uh, and just to echo uh, the remarks of, of folks. Uh, I certainly would want this to remain a, a wooden boardwalk. It's, it was built that way. It was not built to be a sidewalk, and that that fight will continue. But I do believe that it deserves its rightful place to be known as a New York City landmark. Um, we didn't have many landmarks in this part of town. And when you see the other landmarks in the city, city of New York, it's very interesting where they're located and where this was not a part of that fabric. I'm proud to say that now we are 
on the levels of Central Park and Prospect Park. I'm very proud of that because we have a lot of rich history here too and we have more work to do, but this is a good day and I proudly vote yes. Thank you. By a vote of four in the affirmative, zero in the negative, with zero abstentions, the item is recommended for approval to the full land use committee. Thank you, Council. I will now call on Council Member Deutsch. Uh, thank you, Chair. So um, I can vote. I'm not on this committee. So, but I just want to congratulate my colleague, Council Member Mark Traeger. And this has been like a good couple of years since this came up, and uh, we've been fighting uh, to landmark this bo the boardwalk. So I, I want to thank um, Mayor de Blasio and the Landmark Commission and I just want to finish off by saying that uh, Borough President Regelman is definitely smiling down to us right now knowing that the boardwalk's being landmark. So uh, thank you all. Thank you council member and at this time I do thank the members of the public, my colleagues, council and land use staff for attending today's hearing. This meeting is hereby adjourned.